Salut les amis Bienvenue chez Ready Study Play. Je suis Mike et... I'm Ole. Nous sommes ici pour jouer au jeu de société Jean d'Arc. That was amazing. How the hell did you do that? I was channeling my inner Joan. I'm impressed. You know, me and Joan, we go way back, obviously. Yeah, I kind of feel like you should be playing the French this game then. You're so clearly good at it. I should be, but we decided to divide up factions on the only sensible basis by t-shirt color. Yeah, which, I'm not going to lie, was a little bit incidental. It was completely incidental. Yeah, actually. Accidental, even. Accidental. Incidental, accidental. Organization. We're playing Joan of Arc from Mythic Games. So those English people that didn't follow that amazing opening monologue. Yeah, I'll, I'll subtitle it. <laughs> um, so this is Time of Legends, Joan of Arc, and this is a big miniatures game from Mythic Games. Uh, this was a Kickstarter, and now we've got uh, we've got the second scenario from the core box set up. But of course, there's more than just the core box. Oh, there's much, much more. Much, much. Oh, that's heavy. So this is the first wave of the game. We don't have the second wave. I don't think anyone has the second wave, but it comes with the core box. It comes with super... Kickstarter exclusives box, which Super. comes with a cat. Ah. Oh. And then you get the Relinquary, which is more Kickstarter stuff that was unlocked during the campaign, which funded enormously. Wow. Deeply worried by how much stuff we've got on the table right now. So cool, though. The Unleash Hell box, that comes with Satan. And that comes with the Beast. Yeah. And the Core box comes with the Tarasque. There's... So, if you're like, what is this? Why are you showing me these boxes? Um, don't worry. This is basically a historical simulator for the Hundred Years' War. Totally historically accurate, I yeah. would also add. This one whoa, is the legendary dragon, of course. And you can play St. Michael versus the dragon. So, yeah, so the accuracy of this historical simulator... Um, basically, what happened is, as, as more content was released, it became apparent that you can do... A completely accurate historical battle. I say completely accurate, of course. It's. It is. Ah! <laughs> I need space! Box, uh, box attack! Too many boxes. That, that's stable. So it is a relative. For a war game, it's a relatively light grid hex based war game with a bunch of dice chucking and unit types and stuff running around murdering each other. And, and I. Uh, failed to kill you! Uh, that's a pretty good attack roll if you're attacking. If you're defending, then you're in trouble. Yes. So, lots of dice and stuff for for attacks, and some are better for attacks, and some are better for defense. But they've released the English army, of course, and the French army, and you can do the Hundred Years of War based around a ton of scenarios, which yep. are taken from history. They also put in an Ottoman army as well that you can play as, and you can do more historical scenarios with the Ottoman army. And the Wallachians. Is that what I meant by the Ottomans? No, the Ottomans are in it as well. The Valachians are Vlad Tepish. Right, yes. And uh, you can play Vlad Tepish as a hero, commander, or as Count Dracula as well, because he informed that myth. And that's where the game kind of then sidelines into, you can do, a, it adds a lot of mythological stuff. So you've got the Unleash Hell box set that comes with Satan, and you can literally, literally do a scenario where Satan is attacking a town in France. You've got the Legendary Dragon, where you can recreate the myth of St. Michael versus the Dragon, and there's all kinds of... St. George, isn't it? Oh. St. George was the English, English patron, saint. patron saint who fought a dragon. So St. Michael also fought one. I don't know. I don't know. No, maybe it is St. George, actually. You're right. It might be St. George. I don't... Mm. Mm. Um... Maybe there were more than one dragon? I mean, there's plenty of dragons to go around. Plenty of dragons to go around. But essentially what you've got is a whole collection of scenarios which are based more or less on history or supernatural sort of like theological... Re what might have happened if 
things had happened. And there's also scenes where it's just like random supernatural shenanigans. Like there's a werewolf in a town. You've got to find him before he finishes converting yeah. everyone. There's like, so there's, there's a lot of big difference. Like what we've set up for here is quite clearly a historical pitched battle. Mm. But there's also a scenario where you're moving characters around a town, interrogating peasants, trying to find werewolves. Yeah. And that one's going to involve a lot of different kind of stuff. And what, um, sort of uh, discussion trees and little adventure cards yeah. and uh, what we've got we can actually do a bit of that in this scenario as well and who knows maybe I'll talk to the blacksmith try and get him to make me a piece of equipment it's just uh, there's there's lots of different things going on in this game and it's it's got a lot on offer so um, when I initially backed it on Kickstarter I backed only at the basic pledge level for the core set and I was like this will be more than enough for the channel but you know, and 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 I I really like the theme of this game, the the sort of theological heaven versus hell medieval knights thing just really appeals to me. It's something that I find really engaging. So I was sad that I couldn't go all in for the five hundred and fifty dollar legendary pledge. But um, that money is just not money that I could commit to this project, and. I, uh, so I committed the $120 for the core set, and then I reached out to Mythic uh, later after the campaign had shut down when they were closing the pledge manager, and I said, Hey guys, um, I've got a bit more money. What expansion sets should I get? Do you offer any media discounts? And, you know, to their incredible... You know, and I, I'm only mentioning this story because I wanted to sort of highlight their incredible generosity. They added everything else. They, I've got the Joan of Arc... RPG book and soundtrack. Wow. They added everything else. That's that. <laughs> and then Wave 1 arrived and Ollie and I spent two days trying to figure out what was going on in these boxes. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. We got there and was like, oh my god, how much did you get? Yeah, it's... it, it, it And this is Wave 1, right? That's why we're showing you these boxes. This is Wave 1. Wave 2 is even more stuff. It's got... I say even more stuff. I mean, it's more stuff. I don't know if it's bigger than Wave 1, but there's a castle in there. An entire castle. I really hope there's a thing of the devil attacking the castle, or like the dragon fighting in the castle, or something. Well, my understanding, and this isn't something I think we have rules for, I don't know where these rules are going to be published or anything, but my understanding is that they will be coming out with a rule set that allows you to build your own armies based on points values, and sort of set up your own scenarios. And so you can purchase, if you want... I. Again, I'm not 100% sure about this, but you could, say, purchase Satan for an enormous <laughs> amount of points. And then the other players... 40 pieces of silver, I believe, is the standard standard rate. But, yeah, and then the other... 40 pieces of silver, yeah. Uh, a one human soul, your firstborn <laughs> child. Um, and then the, uh, the, um, the other player could purchase the legendary dragon or something else. I do, and... I do think, though, that if, if there's points values and you buy the legendary dragon, it's like, so this is my army. Mm. What are you bringing? I brought the dragon. I brought the devil. This will be <laughs> decidedly protracted. <laughs> yeah, this will be a very short battle. Um, but uh, so I, we, I, I don't know if they're going to publish those rules on their website or if they're included in Wave 2, um, but I do understand that that is a thing that is happening at some point. Ah. So there, you, you know, so you can sort of do your own matchups. But out of the box, there's an enormous number of scenarios with an enormous number of variety. And we yep. picked scenario number two. Because we did the introductory scenario, and now we're just going to do this pitched battle. We thought we'd start by showing off the sort of the, the miniatures war game element of this. Yes. Because that seemed to be the sort of the the main thing. Yeah. Also, it was given it's Joan of Arc. It felt kind of right to try at least do an actual historicalish battle first. We don't actually have Joan of Arc in this battle. No. <laughs> However, we do have uh, Philip de Valois. I'm sorry, this is pronunciation is going to be terrible. My French isn't as good as Mike's. You know history stuff. Do you know who any of these people are? No. I don't either. No. You know who the Black Prince is? I, yeah, I knew of him. I know the Black Prince because I've got his card. The Black Prince is a unit with terror and charisma. And, <laughs> and haste. Oh no, I didn't look up the rules for haste because I didn't see that. Oh, you're an idiot. Oh no, it's cavalry units in the same area. I don't have any cavalry. It's fine. Wait, does that affect my cavalry? <gasps> it definitely doesn't. It does. Do. It definitely does. Unless doesn't. it helps me, and then it does. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. When the Black Prince is activated, you may move one of your rally points to free your allied area. That's intriguing. Mm. At least I can get my rally point out of Oxen Zone. Who aren't allowed to move. Yeah. I, they can move in some scenarios. Not yeah, this although there's some, fun, there's some funny rules in, in this particular scenario. For example, 
um, no hooves on the pavement means my cavalry aren't allowed to go into towns. Oh, really? Yeah. which oh, that's is really funny. Which is hilarious, considering one of my heroes is on a horse and starts in a town. So I think it's specifically the cavalry units. So the knights. Um, I guess so. Because otherwise there's like, no, no hooves on the pavement. I'm your literal king. <laughs> it means you couldn't discuss with any of those people in the town. Because only com- commanders or heroes or whatever they're called can discuss stuff. Yes. So what what we're hoping to demonstrate... So there, the, the way the game works is there's a whole bunch of sort of very basic rules and then they hang a lot of sort of stuff on those rules based on these unit cards and scenario-specific elements. And so um, this is a siege of some kind, I think? Uh, no, this no, is just a this, battle. This is me having chased you out of different parts of France and you're now running for your lives and digging in because you figured, out oh, crap, we need to die on our feet or win and i know which side i'm voting for it looks like you have a lot more people than me yeah this is my gigantic army this has routed you you were the remnants oh dear didn't you read the campaign book (gasps) he ignored the law no i just made up my own see i'm the plucky english heroes and you're invading my countryside and yet this is in france and i have my french peasants fighting you off i chose to ignore those facts (laughs) because they're in vogue these days (laughs) it's inconvenient for me so i'm ignoring them Um, so um so the victory conditions for this scenario so i need to destroy both of these oxen carts which are not allowed to move or i need to kill the black prince and where is your other dude the Edward, I believe. Edward the Third. Yes. So I need to kill both of them. So the Black Prince is here. Um, he's this guy, and Edward the Third is here. He's this guy. Yeah. So the one standing on rocks, Ollie. That's easy to remember. Yep. That's good. Um, and you just need to kill. Where is he? Ah, this guy. Ah, the horsey with the black face. Yes, Philip de Valois, the sixth. Now, I do want to just point out here, really quickly, caveat it before Ollie continues with, continues with the victory conditions. All of these models are 100% representing the units they're supposed to be representing. We made no mistakes. We've set it up meticulously and 100% correctly. Please continue. Alternatively, you can kill 10 of my French or Genoese troops. If you, kept, if you destroy... Wait, these crossbowmen are going to be on your team? I bloody well hope so. I've paid for them. No, you didn't. <laughs> Historically, I paid for them. <laughs> what? Maybe. They're mercenaries. Anyway, um, one of the other things as well, uh, just segueing into that, the crossbowmen are going to be randomly deployed. So, uh, we were going to do this on camera because it's more fun. Yeah! Uh, da, 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 da. So... Uh, the entrenched Genoese crossbowmen have been disturbed by the French assault before the battle erupted. They are now neutral. No player can activate them. To move into the areas they're occupying, they need to be destroyed first. Getting a move or a wound ro- result results in getting a kill blow when attacking the entrenched Genoese crossbowmen. During the setup, randomly place ten of those tokens, six blank and four with things on, uh, in the areas shown in the setup. So, basically just the middle and between us. So yeah, I, I paid for them and sent them after you, but I didn't pay for the guys with the shields. So, you kind of just murdered them. So they've decided not to work for me anymore. Um, where are these uh, going out? There's one here. So one there, 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 one there. Okay. I hope you got that. And then over here. So yep. basically what these are sort of... They're sort of like annoying blockers, really, that are going to be a pain in your butt. Yep. All right, so shall we find out where, where they are? Uh, hang on a second. Uh, yes. So now we flip the face up. Nope. Nope. Yep. Yep. So I don't want these guys to die. Uh, yeah, you do, because you're trying to get to me, right? No, I don't. If... 10 French or Genoese units are destroyed or disrupted, I lose. Oh, wow. So you're just going to have to go around these guys. Yep. They are my mercenaries who are now not helping me. But they're not attacking you. Um, or Well, they'll attack whoever attacks. The, well, actually, they won't attack. So you don't want to kill them because it, it attributes to the lose condition. Yeah. But also, I kind of don't want to kill them because then you have to go around them. And that so suits me. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure if they're supposed to be taking pot shots or not. Because it doesn't say they attack anyone. They are neutral. Yeah, and we've got their card here, but they don't have retaliate or anything, so... Um, 
yeah, so they're basic. I mean, they're very easy to kill because they're entrenched. They're so if they suffer a push, they die. Really? Yeah. Oh. So they become very vulnerable when they're entrenched. Whereas when they're not entrenched, the crossbowmen can be entrenched or unentrenched. They they can. Um, oh god. Choose to become, but they're not going to become unentrenched because there's no, no one controlling. Yeah, them. no one controls them. So they're just going to kind of sit there and be easy to kill. Yeah. And you're going to have to like basically go around them. Yay. <laughs> God damn, they're uh, they're they're generally speed bumps, as opposed to the regular speed bumps you've already laid for me. Yep. I also did. This, was this one here? That was there. Yep. Good, fun. All right, let's kill everything. All right. Well, in this particular scenario, the French start because we're kicking you out of France. And what we'll do is we'll kind of try our best to explain what's going on as we go along. Yes. So we've done our starting resources. So we both start with two experience points. Um, we also have um, two guys who are level two. So for well, anyone who's unfamiliar with this, which probably most of you. Don't worry, Ali. I've got all the rules about paying the upkeep and stuff here. Okay. I just wanted to see which ones are level two. Oh, yeah. Who's, so Who's your level? I've already got mine. Mine's Edward. Okay. Mine is Charles the Magnanimous. So I get to pick which... Nope, he just has the one level up. Fun. He is magnanimous. How many hit points does your guy have? Uh, the one you got to kill. Yeah. Four? No, that's no, two. two. No. But he gets three when he levels up. Mine's only got... Oh, you have to kill both of mine though, right? I have to kill or disrupt both of yours. And they have two each. Poop. Then again, I've got two black dice for defense, which is very good because it's a 50-50. So, do you know what happens first? We flip that. The round card. That dun, one. dun, da, da. We get three. Three. These are our activation banners, and they're going to activate our units. Thank you. And we're going to do, use them for things. Yes. Um, <laughs> That's the, the very technical language. Sorry, it took us a while to set this up, and we're a little brain dead. So we're going to do our best. And I'm very, I apologize in advance if we say things that, if it seems like we're speaking in tongues, it was Satan. I mean, you're English, so in this scenario, you're always on the side of Satan. The Pope said so. <laughs> the Pope said so, so it must be true. You know, after Joan convinced him. <laughs> right. Uh... And she was on the French side, so that's just blatant propaganda and bias. Yeah. By you. You lie. A lot. You dirty English pig dog. <laughs> Obviously, I'm on the side of God, just a slightly different side of God. Yes, the wrong side. War Council card. Right. Duh. I assume you shuffled that to a round deck, by the way. Yes. Okay. Several, cool. several times. So it's probably unshuffled. Da 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 da. Coin for two council cards and a so coin, and discard. No, gain two council cards and a coin, and then discard one. Uh, sorry, two tactics cards. These are the council cards. Da da. Get a blue. Get a retaliation order. And discard a tactics tactics card to gain two experience or two money. Um, so actually, during the council phase, I can draw one tactics card. So I'm just going to do that now, because it might behoove me. It might behoove you, might it? Um, interesting. So I we don't, don't start know. with any of these, do we? That's unusual. No. We usually get to start with some. Okay, so then it's uh, it's over to you to pick first, because you are the first player, but we can pick the same card. Yes. Just I might gain some insight into all these tactics if he picks first. I'm going to take that one. I'm going to gain two cards and a coin. And then discard a card. Yes. So, my right. coin's down so. here. And what we're using in this game, guys, is these uh, green ones because they're called tactics. And these tactics cards are kept in the hand by the player and that you can play them on your turn for the cost in um, Ooh. points. Ooh, definitely that one. Legendary tokens, I think, is what they're called. Definitely that one. I think you have the tokens over there on your side, Ollie. I have all the tokens. Don't worry about that. I don't want to put them where my drink is. Fine. <laughs> That's only going to go badly when I start rolling dice. <laughs> I'll fish them out. There is also a cool Joan of Arc dice tower that I have and put together and we're not using because it couldn't fit on the tip. It's very tall. It's very cool, but table space. We'll, we'll show you afterwards. Yeah, we'll show you. Show you. Um, in, the, right. in the coming... Coming time. In the coming season. Uh, so, and then you, you took one of your pointy things? Pointy things. I will... Uh, sp I'm going to discard this one. Actually, no. Do you know what? I'm just going to take... 
another retaliate action. I think... So retaliatory. Well, I think that that's going to really benefit me. It's going to behoove you. Coming battle, yeah. This coming slaughter. I've got an entire army to stop here. This coming slaughter. Okay, cool. Well, in that case, I am going to start activating. Wait. First, Ollie, we must pay upkeep. One experience points each, because we each start with a level two character. And now it's the beginning of the first player's turn, and it begins with the orders phase. Yay. Okay. I so want to charge you, it's not even funny. Because I could do that and then charge you there. Take out some bowmen. So I think I'm going to. One. Two. And that's also them, because they're all in the same bit. So that's that. Yep. And so the way this sort of works is that Ollie's charging into the area I'm in. Yep. And if he pushes everyone out or kills everyone, he can follow up into that space. And because I've got Impetuous, I have to follow up. Well, that character has to follow up, but you probably don't want to leave them all alone. No. <laughs> no. However... Alright, so we've got a red and a yellow for Charles, the Magnanimous. When attacking after a follow-up, after a follow-up, after combat, I gain a Legendary, which is cool. And then I've got two units of Knigets, who are two red each. Can I have another red? I'm totally going to be completely murdered. Oh, God, yes, you are. Yeah, this is not going well for me. For glory! For the hell of it! Yeah. So we've got two disrupts. Three disrupts? Three disrupts, oh dear. A kill and a push. A push back and a kill. Yep. And a blank. All right, so now what I really want is just... I mean, honestly, if they're both disrupted, that's probably a good result for me. Um, but kills first. Yeah, so hopefully I can get one shield so that they aren't killed. No shields for you. So basically, this is going to murder it. It's going to go away forever. And these ones are just going to sort of remove it from the board, and it might come back later. Ah, I did it. I got the one shield. A shield and a blank. God. So On the worst die roll as well. So now we would assign these to the units, but because they're two disrupts, they're just going to go straight over here to the area of fate. Doom. And um, he has to follow up. Yep. And then you can follow up with the rest if you so desire. Oh, God, yes. Right. And because he followed up, uh, I gain some legend. Is that his special ability? Yes. When attacking after a follow-up after combat, gain one legendary coin. Nice. Also, uh, when he defends, if I have a blank on a white die, <laughs> I draw a card. Cool. And uh, then uh, yeah. I may do a retaliation if I so desire. I feel like it's against the spirit of the game to retaliate with people that are dead. <laughs> or just no. murderously Sorry, injured. not a retaliation. This is important to be distinct. So I've got interrupt orders that yes. I can use. After Ollie completes an order, I can choose to play an interrupt order. There's also some units that have retaliate, but we'll talk about that when it becomes relevant. Retaliation is always a thing. But uh, I would interrupt in order to retaliate. But with that in mind, I'm actually going to say maybe I'll interrupt tomorrow in Ready City Play. So we'll be back tomorrow to find out what happens. Uh, now that Ollie's disrupted all of my archers. Thanks for coming. I hope you're excited to come on this Joan of Arc adventure with us. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, everyone. Bye.